flow. Going forward, I cannot rely on starting my rocket engine experiments with a butane torch or propane or whatever it was. And so I've decided to build a little electronic sparker using an ignition coil, a nice high tension cable, a relay, and a capacitor. And it can actually make quite a nice spark. Now it doesn't come up too well on the camera, but that is a very, very bright purple, so I'm pretty sure that's pretty hot. Now how this works is we have the ignition coil, and we have that driven by this relay. This relay is driven through itself, so whenever it's charged, it actually breaks its own connection, and then once it breaks its own connection, it becomes uncharged, so it goes back and it, it repeats the cycle. Now by itself, it goes too quickly, and so I've added this little capacitor, which helps to slow it down because whenever it charges the coil inside here, it also charges the capacitor. And once it breaks the connection, the capacitor runs it for a couple milliseconds or whatever. And that's just long enough to allow for the ignition coil to charge up. And then it going back and forth quite a lot is what cre creates that spark. Now I hope whenever I get to the other, the split door spark plug that is on the rocket engine, at least the first rocket combustion chamber test chamber thingamabob. That one has a longer gap, so that'll actually help ignite the gaseous fuels even more. Oh no. This is why I normally don't play with high voltage. That is why. It's a pretty good spark, I think. I think that'll probably be a good enough igniter for these tests. However, I do worry that it'll have a hard time lighting the propane if I push the propane in there too quickly. You know, maybe it'll, maybe it'll displace the oxygen before it can actually ignite. So, the only thing to do now is to do a test. The ignition coil is installed. Although I do worry about the flame, so after this point we're going to have to work on making sure that everything has either heat shields or can withstand the temperature. Because I imagine even in this test we're going to have some melted plastic. And I went ahead and added the oxygen line and the solenoid because I already have the parts, so I might as well add them to it. A battery specifically for... Whoa! I forgot that I had bled the system so there wasn't any oxygen in the fuel line and so that meant that there was some propane in the combustion chamber. Oh well, at least we know it worked, so that's good. Well, that's interesting. So I guess this explains why the Russians use giant matches to start their Soyuz rocket engines, and like SpaceX uses hypergolic fuels to st uh, starter fluids to ignite their rocket engines. Because evidently this is not as easy to do with a spark. To be fair, this is a very small spark, so maybe I should make the gap wider. That is one option. Another option is perhaps it can actually work better with oxygen. So if I get the mixtures going incorrectly, but that's whenever you get a hard start and possibly have shrapnel flying everywhere. Another option though is that I haven't looked into this, but perhaps there is a narrower mixture ratio possible for burning with propane and oxygen. Whereas I believe hydrogen, you can have a very wide range of ratios and it'll still burn. Whereas with this, it could be there's not enough oxygen and there's too much propane. So yeah, that's kind of where I'm at with here. Just a quick little video updating you on the progress of the ignition. I think we might, if I can find some hydrogen, I might try it. But 
to be honest, propane's so easy for this part that I'm just going to stick to that for now. I would like to hear what you guys think, and thank you very much for watching. See ya!